All right, so here's something I wanted to talk about real quick. A lot of the times when you're self-taught or when you're first learning how to code or even if you're a junior developer at your first job, you really get caught up in worrying about all the things that you don't know. We really tend to overthink all the things that we don't know and we kind of overlook all the things that we do know and many of the times we get very concerned with what other people might think about our lack of knowledge and how our performance might be impacted by all the things that we don't know. When you're learning, don't get caught up worried about all the stuff that you don't know and don't try to feel like you need to learn everything before you can start building stuff. Really, that's gonna impede your learning. It's better to just start building things even if you have a lack of knowledge and understanding for all the stuff that needs to go into what you have to use to build it and just begin to build and learn the things as you go. And on the topic of not knowing stuff, the reason this came up is that someone in my Discord was kind of talking about feeling like they didn't know enough and all the stuff that they didn't know and how overwhelming it was for all the things that they needed to learn. And I wanted to talk about Dan Abramoff. He is one of the creators of Redux. He's part of React's core team. And this dude is a very smart guy. And years ago when I was first, you know, getting started in software development and at my first job, I remember he came out with a blog post where he talked about all the things that he didn't know. And again, this is a little bit older, but he, it just goes to show you that at this point, this guy had been working at Facebook for a while. He helped build Redux, which is a very popular state management tool for React. And these are all the things that he said that he didn't know. And if you look at it, it really kind of gives you an idea of how you don't need to know everything to build really cool stuff. This guy will code circles around me, I'm sure. And given the fact that he was comfortable enough to come out and say all the things that he feels that he just doesn't know that well, made me feel really good at the time when I read this and I thought that I would share it with you guys now just so you can feel a little bit better about maybe your lack of knowledge and understanding. And if you look at a lot of the stuff that he mentions here that he felt like he didn't know, you'll see that he said that he didn't know many Unix and bash commands. He didn't understand low level languages. He didn't understand a networking stack, containers, serverless stuff. He, at this time in 2018, now this was some years ago, but I'm sure that he knows a little bit more about this stuff now, or maybe he might not. And maybe these are things that he still just has never had to use, so he's never had to learn it, and he doesn't really know it. And some people might be very well versed in these topics, some people might be very knowledgeable in these areas, but this person who created Redux and was part of React's core team doesn't know a lot of this stuff. He doesn't know Python, he doesn't know Node backends. He doesn't understand native platforms and algorithms and functional languages and functional terminology and modern CSS and CSS methodologies and SAS and preprocessors and cores. There's so many things on this list that he just says that he didn't know at the time. And I wanted to share this because I feel that this is something good for beginners to understand that you don't need to know everything. You don't need to understand everything. You don't need to feel like you're inadequate because you don't have such a firm grip on all the stuff that you're trying to learn. That's okay. Just continue to build your projects, continue to grow, continue to work on yourself and learn what you're trying to learn and eventually you'll get good enough. Don't get hung up on all the stuff you don't know. Try to focus on the things that you do know and then focus on the areas that you wanna learn about and then just take it from there. One step at a time, one day at a time. Don't try to overthink where you wanna be in a few months. Just work on what you can work on now. Because if you start to overthink where you're trying to get to, you might just end up feeling overwhelmed and you might end up burning out or you might end up just quitting because it might feel like it's too much. But understand that you don't need to know everything. Most of us don't know everything. So I went ahead and I made a list of some of the things that I feel like I don't know very well. And I wanted to share that with you now just to give you maybe a little bit more reassurance and a boost in your own confidence about all the stuff that I don't know even after four years of being a software developer and a web developer and learning how to code and all that good stuff. So the first thing I'll mention is regular expressions. Anytime I have to do anything with regex, I just feel lost. I often just Google what I'm trying to do and then I use a tool like regexer 
to help me out and I copy and paste and dump a bunch of stuff in there and I fumble around almost every single time that I have to use it. So the next thing is gonna be SQL. When I first started learning how to code, I did a lot of Mongo stuff. At my first job, we used a JCR, which is a Java content repository, and I didn't use a relational database and I didn't use SQL. And that's something that I'm now getting a little bit more comfortable with, but I still don't know it very well. I have to Google a lot of basic queries and it's just something that I'm learning now and I'm not very good at it. And the more I use it, the better I get, but I still can't confidently say that I know SQL at all. Even though I work in it and I technically have a couple years of experience in it, I'm not very proficient with SQL queries or SQL at all. So one more thing that I'm not very comfortable with, but I'm starting to learn a little bit more about now are design patterns. I didn't really have a need to learn too much about design patterns. I had a understanding of the basics, but my role was never to architect anything. And except for understanding a little bit of like singletons and factory patterns and object oriented programming, I didn't really need to learn too much more about design patterns. And now I'm starting to understand that stuff a little bit more and I'm starting to learn a little bit more about it, but I'm still not comfortable saying that I know design patterns very well. Architecture, uh, systems architecture and, and how to architect an application is still something that is very new to me. And I'm just not at that level of having to architect an application. I've been learning a little bit more about this stuff recently, but it's still something that's really new to me and something that I'm learning as well. One more thing that I'm not very comfortable with and I'm also starting to learn a little bit more about now are higher order functions. Uh, that's something that was really hard for me to understand when I first came across the concept and I've only had to really use them a few times and I've needed help when implementing higher order functions from more senior level developers because I just didn't understand them very well. I don't know algorithms and data structures. I have been lucky enough to where I have not needed to whiteboard for many interviews and the jobs that I got didn't require me to do that for my interview process. And besides brute forcing a few of the easy stuff on leak code and some of the algorithms on free code camp and trying to grind some leak code stuff when I was looking for interviews, I really don't know much about algorithms and I understand a few of the basic ones, but I really couldn't implement many of the algorithms that are needed for job interviews. And that's something that I'm really not good at at all. Java and Kotlin. So while I've worked in Java and Kotlin for years, I'm not much of a backend developer and I've never really needed to write a lot of Java or Kotlin code. When I used Kotlin at my previous job, I used it a lot on the front end when we were using it for our server side HTML and I used it a little bit on the back end. But besides writing a few getters and setters in Java and Kotlin, I really don't use it all that much. I mean, I can read it, I can figure some stuff out and if I need to get in there, I can find the answer by Googling and and understanding what I need to do, but I wouldn't say that I am, you know, a very good Java developer or a very good Kotlin developer. I feel a lot more confident in my JavaScript and TypeScript skills than I do in my Java or Kotlin skills. Since we're mentioning Dan Abramoff, I might as well mention that I don't know Redux. And honestly, now, since it's been years since I touched React, I'm probably not very comfortable in React. I've been working in Angular for the last few years, and I only had a small amount of React experience. And when we used React at my previous job, we weren't using Redux. So if I had to do anything with React and Redux, I would probably have to do a lot of reading, and I would probably be starting, maybe not from ground zero, because I have a little bit of React experience, and I used it a bit at my first job, but if I had to build something in React or Redux right now, I would probably have to do a lot of researching and Googling and watching some videos in order to get caught up and know all the latest and greatest stuff that React is doing. And if I even need Redux, because now they got hooks and all this different stuff that React has natively, then maybe Redux isn't even needed anymore. But if it was, I don't really know it either. A few other things that I'll wrap up real quick. I don't know Vue. I don't know Next.js. I don't know Tailwind CSS. I don't know many of these new frameworks and stuff that have been popping up in the last couple months and years because I haven't had to use them. Functional programming. I don't understand functional programming. I've never used functional programming. And a lot of people will tell you that React is functional programming, but 
that's up for debate and I'm not gonna get into that in this video, but even with my short experience in React, I still don't know much functional programming and all I've ever worked in has been object-oriented programming. So my functional programming skills are pretty much minimal to non-existent. Design tools. I've done a lot of like UX and UI development and I've been mostly a front-end developer my whole career since I started working as a web developer. And I don't know many design tools. I recently just started using Figma for my thumbnails and I'm trying to get a little bit more familiar with it. And I used a tiny bit of Adobe XD, but even though I did a lot of front end stuff, I never had a need to understand how to use these tools because I wasn't a designer. And pretty much designers would just hand stuff down to me. But a lot of front end developers and people who are learning how to code feel like they might need to know how to use these tools. But honestly, I don't know how to use many of the design tools that are out there. And I'm a terrible designer terrible designer. Any designs I make are usually awful and I just steal good designs from other people online and change them a little bit to make them my own because, you know, good artists copy, great artists steal, right? And that's what I usually do when I need to make a new website for myself or for someone else. I look for designs that other people made that look good and tweak them a little bit and then just call it good because I suck at designs and I suck at using design tools and that's just something that I wanted to mention also. So there you have it. I'm not gonna keep going on all the stuff that I don't know because the list will never end. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. There's gonna be a lot of stuff that you don't know and it's okay. Just keep learning as long as you're eager and willing to learn stuff and happy to, you know, read up on things and watch videos on things and get your hands dirty to figure out how something works, you'll be fine. And that's just something that I wanted to get out there for a lot of you new people that are just getting started with coding and are feeling overwhelmed with all the stuff that you don't know. So don't worry, there's gonna be plenty of time for you to learn all these things. Just take your time and keep focusing on what you need to do in order to get better every day and don't worry so much about all the stuff you don't know. It's okay, nobody knows everything, and that's just fine, because the beauty of it is that there's a lot of resources out there to get you the information that you need for the questions that you have, for the things that you don't understand and that you don't know. With all that said, if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you want some more tips and tricks on learning how to code and becoming a self-taught programmer, and I'll see you next time.